I'm back with comedian Dave Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. This job is like jail to me. I literally have no time to do anything. It's just fucking get to work, do the work, get home, eat, an hour and a half with the kids, podcast, straight to sleep now. Because I was running on like five hours sleep for the first three weeks a night and I felt everything falling apart. So I'm like, I have to at least try my best to get fucking seven hours sleep. And last night I got six and a half hours sleep. But six and a half hours, seven hours sleep puts me to bed at 10 p.m. Or 10.30 to be exact. 10.30 p.m. in bed asleep. I've got to be asleep. And then the alarm goes off 5.30 and that's seven hours. And it's not like I fucking have a good day after the alarm goes off. It's wake up, obviously check my investments and then get to work and work all day. (laughs) All fucking day. The more I do this job, the more you realize it's fucking time. Time is the only thing you should be worried about. That's the only truly finite fucking asset you have is your fucking time. And I'm just hoping the time I'm fucking dedicating to this is going to open up future time for me. It's like a sacrifice. I haven't really in my life sacrificed that much. I'm not well known for my sacrifices, but this is definitely one of them because I'm in fucking jail. I haven't got there just yet, but I think it's only a couple of months away where I'm like, all right, full fucking refocus here. I need to set out some goals. I need some direction. I need to figure out what I want to do with the next section of my life because it's definitely not this. I don't even know how cunts can do it longer than six months. I'm not someone who should have a job. I'm just not. I should not have a job. Like I'm working hard. I'm working as hard as the Filipinos. Well, maybe a little bit less hard than the Filipinos. I'm working harder than the two Irish guys. So there's four Filipinos, two Irish guys, two Algerians, and a Pakistani guy. That's the crew. (laughs) and one very quiet Australian. I work as hard as anyone out there, but I know I'm leaving at some point. I know there's an exit for me. This is like a hit and run for me. I'm just there taking some change, getting out of debt, and hopefully opening up the future. I'm just like a tourist there, to be honest with you. I'm working hard, but I'm a tourist. I'm like, I can do this job for like six months and I'm out. (laughs) Oh my God. I've got a full fucking stretching routine down at work that I do twice a day as well. So I'm actually getting more and more flexible while I do this job and my body's adjusted to the fucking work you have to do a bit. It's still painful and it's still fucking hard, but all those muscles that I wasn't using are now fucking stronger. And the main thing I have to contend with is the hour and a half free time a night I have. That's if I want to spend some time with my kids. I mean, I could completely ignore them and get that extra hour and a half, but I enjoy spending time with my kids so when I get home instead of just coming in doing the podcast reading doing doing whatever I want to do I come home spend some time with the kids and then just do the stuff later which leaves me really no time actually because after the pod it's just straight to bed but the pay is good (laughs) When you're doing like 60, 70 hours a week, the pay ends up being pretty fucking good. I'm about to put this week's pay into Cypher and Iron as well, which also extends out the working fucking stint 
for another week. But these things are bubbling. I'm ready to go for it. I just feel fucking bad as well because I'm watching these guys at work and obviously none of them really know what the fuck inflation is and all that sort of stuff. So I just feel like these cunts are fucking working so hard and they're giving up so much of their life for this fucking currency that just evaporates eventually. And inflation steals your wages unless you get a pay rise every year of like between 7 and 10%, your real wages are going down every single year. So these guys are working just as hard for less money every single year. And I fucking want to tell them about Bitcoin. That's the only reason why I can fucking stomach it because if you funnel this shit into Bitcoin... It's locked in there. It locks your earnings in. It locks the time in. And then it grows itself. You know what I mean? You work, you put a thousand dollars of your pay into Bitcoin, and it's locked in. It might fluctuate. The price will fluctuate. Who gives a fuck? It's locked in. No one can fucking inflate it. No one can fucking do anything to it. No one can fucking touch it. It's just locked in. That's what I love. That's the only reason I can stomach this bullshit is because once I get into Bitcoin, it's safe. The same with my investments. These investments that I have, they're with banks and fucking eToro and Coinbase and shit like that. I don't believe any of that is mine until I sell, I cash out, and put it in Bitcoin. Once it's in Bitcoin, it's safe. Until then, it's just floating in the ether in my mind. Anything could happen. The banks could go fucking bankrupt. They could take your shares. Like, anything could happen. But no matter what, once it's in Bitcoin, it's safe. Obviously, it's got to be on a cold storage wallet. So... Yeah, that's the fucking depressing thing out there as well. So many people are giving up their time and their life for this fucking inflating, worthless currency. Anyway, fucking, I'm going back to jail in the morning. Got a gig tomorrow night, so that fucking chews up my hour and a half. So I'll be up late tomorrow night, which means I'll get no fucking sleep. Anyway... That'll fucking do it for today, and I'll see ya the fuck later.